Big Tigger, it's Kamala Harris. Happy New Year. How uh, are you? Happy New Year. How are you, Vice President Harris? I am well, sir. I am well. Ready for the year. Absolutely. Good to talk to you again. Um, we are excited about this new election cycle. Uh, the VP, yourself, and, and uh, Pro- uh, President Biden have been doing a lot of things, in particularly in Georgia and in particularly with black communities since you've been in the office. Uh, I just heard about this business loans for ex-prisoners thing. Yes. So what we're doing is we basically, you know, for too many people who were formerly incarcerated, who have been convicted of a felony, they were not al- allowed. They were not eligible for certain loans from the Small Business Administration. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when we look at the fact that, first of all, it's just it's too many, too many burdens that people who have already served their time, done their time face that we need to get rid of because it's obstacles to them to be able to come back, take care of their family and, and have a fresh start and a second chance. So this was one of those issues where there were restrictions on entrepreneurs, on our young people, on our people who come back after they've served their time to be able to be creative to start a business. And so we changed that and we ended that so that now the fact that somebody was previously um, incarcerated or has a, a, a conviction will not prohibit them from being able to receive an SBA loan, that they will now be eligible to apply for and receive an SBA loan and that that conviction or that incarceration period will not prevent them from getting one. So it's a very big deal because, you know, we have seen an incredible growth in our small businesses. And, you know, in our communities, our small businesses are really part of the economic fabric Absolutely. and the civic fabric of, of the community, right? It's they, they who hire locally and mentor. And and um, so that's something that we just most recently did that I'm very proud of. Indeed. Talking to Vice President Kamala Harris this morning. So as far as this election has a lot to do with uh, with black people, let's just keep it 100. Um, and there are lots of people like what what have or what are uh, the current administration? What have they done or what are they going to do specifically for black people? So, I mean, look, Big Tigger, you mentioned it in terms of SBA loans, right? Mm-hmm. So that's about making sure that people have access to the ability to create wealth, right? Access to capital, access to the the money that is necessary to be the foundation to grow and create wealth. So that's been part of our theme for the kind of work that we are doing, focused on all communities, but with an understanding of racial wealth gaps and the need to pay attention to the black community. Similarly, then, we have dealt with the issue of student loan debt. What we know is that black students are more likely to take out loans and at larger amounts. I know this as a graduate of an HBCU. I know it is based on when we look at the number of HBCUs in Atlanta and the number of black college students in Atlanta and the region. It's a big issue. So our administration decided to cancel student loan debt for over three and a half million folks Mm -hmm. um, at a rate of about $137 billion so far that we've canceled. And I will tell you, it has not been without obstacles because there are people in D.C. who don't want us to do this and are still fighting us, including fighting us in the courts. But the president and I have been insistent that we are going to cancel student loan debt in a way that it will not burden people so that they're not able to work and have a family and buy a home and do the things that everybody aspires to do and dreams about doing to be productive. Indeed. Uh, uh, alongside those lines, but also very specific, there's a lot on the line for, for women in particular and black women uh, as it regards to reproductive rights. What's What are some of the other things that re- people need to be paying attention to? Well, I'll start with some work I've been doing for years on the issue of black maternal mortality. You and I have talked about this before. Black women are three to four times more likely to die than other women in connection with childbirth. And it, we have one of the highest rates of maternal mortality as the United States as any country, so-called developed country in the world. So I've been dealing with this for many years mm-hmm. as vice president. Part of how I've d- addressed it is to challenge the states to extend postpartum care with Medicaid coverage from two months to 12 months. When I started as vice president, there were only three states that did it. I challenged all states to do it. And now 43 states 
has extended Medicaid to cover postpartum care from two months to now 12 months. That's part of what we need to do. We need to address the biases in the healthcare system because the bottom line also is that when black women walk into that clinic or that hospital, she's just not taken as seriously as other women. And we know that black maternal mortality, it affects the whole family. It affects her partner, her husband, her, her, all of her family members. And I've sadly met far too many people, you know, in particular the partners of, of women who have passed or the baby who has not made it right. um, because of a lack of resources or taking that woman seriously. So black maternal mortality is a big issue. The other issue is what we need to do to fight for reproductive freedoms for, for all people, but for, you know, in particular, women being able to make decisions about their own body and not their government telling them what to do. You know, these abortion bans in Georgia six weeks before most women even know they're pregnant. Mm. You know, she should be able to make that decision with, if she chooses her pastor or priest, but the government shouldn't be telling her what she should be doing with her body. And that's part of the battle we have ahead is to fight to have everyone just agree, which I know we do. You don't have to abandon your faith or deeply held beliefs to agree. The government should not be telling her what to do with her body. She knows what's in her own best interest. She doesn't need somebody in the state capitol telling her what to do. Absolutely. Talking to Vice President Kamala Harris this morning. Uh, the, the election is November 5th. I've been encouraging people to please go get registered, please get educated, and then absolutely bring your behind out to the poll and, and vote, uh, leading all the way up to with the, you know, the primaries and everything that lead all the way up to it. Um, we know that you're a football fan. You definitely popped up here, down here in the ATL for the Celebration Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, to to just congratulate my bison. Absolutely. Yes, um, for for playing a good hard game, even though we didn't win. Absolutely, ate you all day long. Please believe it. Uh, do you, you have, know? Do you have any? Do you follow pro football? Do you have like a Super Bowl prediction? I am a huge Niners fan, and they are going to win the Super Bowl. Thank you very much. And, 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 and said so. Uh-huh. Are you, are you, you got to claim it. Are you looking forward to Usher's halftime performance? Of course I am. Of course I am. I'm so glad he's going to be performing. He, you know, talk about somebody who just, he it, it, just such a great artist and has been just, I mean, over the years, just always given everything he's got. It's going to be a good game. Do you have uh, like a, uh, give me like the top three songs you need to hear from Usher during halftime. Um, I would say Confessions, definitely. Uh, <laughs> um, I think, you know, let's see, maybe, um, yeah, of course. Yeah. And then, and then, um, you got it bad. How about that? Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it. Little, okay. Little Is that good? Yes, absolutely. You want to create a playlist for me? Dundi- <laughs> Listen, if you ever need a ticket, I got you. <laughs> I do. Please believe it. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, Vice President Harris, Vice President Harris, I want to thank you for your time. Can you one more time express to, uh, the great residents of Georgia how important their vote will be in this particular election? How important this state is? as far as the uh, the entire situation? I will tell you that in the last election, 2020, and in your Senate elections, Georgia voters had an impact on people around the nation. I would say to your listeners, you as Georgia voters, by voting will make a difference in the lives of people you may never meet. Mm people who may never know your names, but what happens in Georgia will affect the whole country. And I so strongly urge you to not let anybody take your power. I know that there are laws that have been passed in Georgia that try to do that, that try to take your power to vote, including laws that make it illegal to give people food and water to stand in line Mm -hmm. to vote because that's how scared they are that you will vote and make a difference. And so I would encourage you to just do what you do every election cycle. Please take the time in the midst of your busy schedules and lives to, to vote. It really does make a difference. And then finally, big Tigger, I do want to also just mention with sadness about the families, the three families that lost 
their loved ones in that attack on our U.S. troops in Jordan. Um, it, 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 it's, um, it's so tragic, and the three of them are obviously just heroes, but the, the loss to their families and the, the tragedy of it being at a time when they did the most noble work somebody could do, which is to, to serve our country. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I didn't want to end this conversation without just acknowledging them and their families. And of course our prayers and, and condolences are with them and, and the community as a whole. Absolutely. We definitely have kept them in our thoughts and their pri- prayers in light of their loved ones, uh, sacrifice for this country. Uh, and I'm sure that that, that yeah. message will be received by them. Uh, very, very nicely. Uh, Vice President, again, we thank you for the time. I know you pop up regularly down here in the ATL, but if yeah. you ever need me in my <laughs> playlist, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to figure out a way to take you up on that. But it's so good to talk to you again, and please take care. Absolutely. Vice President Kamala Harris with the Big Ticket Morning Show on V103. V103.